Okay, I think it's time to read the second chapter of this book, uh, Born with a Beard. Uh, my name's Ted Ringer, and the uh, second chapter is called Life Goes On. <clears throat> As the days went by, we all got used to each other. Dad appeared at Cribside when he returned from his job in the city going, ho, 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 and laughing. He thought he was pretty funny. I laughed too. Any middle-aged man going ho, ho, ho is comical. He then disappeared into his den for cocktails. My mother continued in the goo-goo-goo vein, but sometimes forgot I was a baby and began to talk to me as if we were old friends. She told me the news. Eisenhower is president, Minneapolis in for more snow, and she'd, list, and she'd list the possibilities for my future. Scholar, civic leader, head of a family. She remembered the beard then, and for her the grand future faltered a little. She continued, a little shakily, but bravely. Circus performer, sailor, mountain climber. My sister also visited me. She had her own style. She'd walk with exaggerated slowness to the crib while stroking her cheeks. She'd peer over and say, Grandpa, we're not getting any younger. And then she'd run out of the room, squealing. She really was funny, I thought. And I was reassured by her words. If I got any younger, I'd be out of business. A baby, even one with a beard, is something to show off. And my parents, once they had recovered from the shock of my appearance, took me to my grandparents. They met us at the door. Now, winter is cold in Minnesota, and I was bundled up tight as protection against it. Mom carried me inside, and when she unwrapped me, it became obvious that I was not an ordinary child. My grandparents had been leaning eagerly over me, but then the first of my whiskers were revealed, and they drew back in shock. My grandmother gasped. My grandfather began clearing his throat. We waited. He began, a baby is a blessing. He stopped here and looked around uncertainly. We were all focused on him. The snow stopped and the clock ceased ticking in anticipation of his remarks. He continued, as we can all see, this is a very mature and I'm sure a very special baby, and I'm very glad to welcome him into the family. He smiled then and we sighed in unison. The snow resumed and time went on as before. My sister muttered, I can't believe it. My grandmother bent over and rubbed her cheek against my beard, murmuring, what a big boy you are, just like your father. Dad quickly looked at her, wondering just exactly what she meant, but softened when he saw her eyes twinkling. He straightened and said, yes, we quite like him. The afternoon progressed pleasantly as my grandfather told us stories of when he had been a baby. My parents, my grandmother, and my sister and I all nodded our heads as he told of traveling with his father, my great-grandfather, who everyone referred to as the chief because of his close ties with the Indians. My grandfather had been at various Indian social events and had been one of a long line of papooses that circled the campfire during warm nights under the stars. He also told how, as a baby, he had been able to read and had particularly liked Jules Verne, Dumas, and Tolstoy. He pointed to his glasses and said, that's how I got these. My sister questioned his ability to remember that far back. He looked at me and winked it and said, some of us can remember. He walked to the bookshelves that lined the room and after a moment pulled out a small, slim volume. He came over to me and said, this book meant a lot to me when I was your age. I want you to have my copy. Books can take us to worlds beyond our own and they're an ocean on which we can set sail 
and explore the past and the future. Always keep them near you, for whether you read them or not, the potential within them will comfort you. He then indicated his glasses and added, but be sure you have good light. He slipped the book between my blankets, and when I got home, I found that it was a copy of the Odyssey in the original Greek. The more I got to know this family, the better I liked them, even my sister. She teased me and attempted to torment me, but I saw that she really did love me despite everything, and she seemed to me the most entertaining of them all. She even began to like my beer, my, my beard, and though she'd never say so, I think at times she wished she had one herself. She sat beside me one afternoon and said, when I grow up, I'm going to be the most powerful woman in France. I smiled at her ambitious nature and then started humming. We giggled and plotted and waited for spring. Mom was doing a little plotting of her own. Based on all she had seen of me so far, she had great plans. Though I was barely in diapers, she had enrolled me in a school where she said I'd learn what's what and what's not. She hadn't quite figured out the exact route or roster of my carpool yet, but she was working on it. Meanwhile, Dad was down in his den reading the Wall Street Journal. Every now and then we'd hear a chuckled ho, ho, ho float up the stairs, so we knew he was all right. One evening, he brought me down there to what he called the inner sanctum. Just the two of us. I had never been there before, and though it was dark and dank, I found it exciting. There were books covering the walls, a couple of large chairs, and a globe that seemed life-size to me. A small, smoky fire burned in the fireplace. We sat opposite each other in front of the fire in our big chairs. We should have been smoking cigars. He looked at me for a long time, and I returned his gaze and wondered what was coming. He began to clear his throat. When that was all over, he leaned forward and said, When you're a little older, if you want to, it would make me very happy if you'd come to work for me, with me, as my partner. You don't have to say anything now. Just think it over. Of course, I was touched and proud that he would want me. I imagined us together in a big office, our desks facing each other. There were maps on the walls, a big globe stood by the window, and the phones were ringing constantly. In between signing huge deals, we smiled at each other. He gave me the thumbs up sign and I returned it, confident that business was good to us and that we were good for business. I looked up from my reverie to see my father smiling at me. Though just a little baby, it seemed I had a lot to look forward to. A wonderful education at an exclusive school, a brilliant career in business, and powerful connections in France. I wouldn't have changed places with any other baby in the world, beard or no beard. Okay.